Hey, this is Charlie, and I am partway through installing my big brake kit on my 95 Supra TT, and I just wanted to go over it, what I'm doing, what I'm modifying, uh, to try to make the install as, as clean as possible. Um, so far, first off, this is a kit that was ordered through Peter Kopp on the Supra forums. Uh, he's also on the, the Facebook pages, um, and he developed these adapters, and he had them stress test. Um, he did the front and the rear that allows you to use SRT8 uh, calipers on the Supra. And these are OEM quality calipers. They're authentic Brembos. Uh, the front are six piston, and the rear are four piston. And these are off the, the SRT8. And when you combine those uh, with his adapters and the Lexus LSF rotors, uh, it's, it's kind of a bolt-on affair. You do have to modify the dust shields, and you do have to do a little bit of grinding on the caliper. Um, but aside from that, it's bolt-on. And you can just see uh, how much uh, more massive they are than, than the stock uh, rotors and calipers. So there's the front, and here's the rear. And he sells a complete kit um, with rotors, with calipers, with his adapters, um, with the brake pads and the clips and the pins for him, um, and stainless steel uh, braided lines uh, made by StopTech. And then this right here is a 97-98 uh, brake master cylinder. It's an OEM part from a Supra. This has a slightly bigger bore than the previous year's Supras, and the bore of this actually matches uh, the same diameter bore from an SRT8. Uh, so I'm going to be swapping the master cylinder, uh, and I'm going to be using this kit on my, on my Supra. And these are Brembo rotors. I think the kit that he normally sells comes with some centric, uh, but I wanted to have Brembo's just so it matched the calipers. Um, so I went with, with Brembo's. Um, and these are also coated with some anti-corrosion stuff, so they're not going to rust. Um, and they are drilled, and the OEM Lexus uh, LSF rotors are drilled, so that's probably why every set that you see of these, if they're aftermarket, are also drilled. If you wanted plain ones, I think you'd have a hard time finding a company that, that makes them. So obviously, when I install uh, these bigger calipers and, and rotors, uh, my stock 17-inch chrome wheels are not going to fit, so I had to get a set of new wheels for it. Fortunately, Peter is also a CCW dealer, so this is what I went with. So these are the rear wheel. These are CCW Classics, uh, 18 by 11. They've got a polished uh, lip, and the center is what they call brushed gloss clear. And I went with uh, non-polished centers. A lot of people will go full polish um, just because I didn't want to keep up with the maintenance. I figure trying to keep this, this lip polished will be plenty. I can't even imagine trying to polish everything in between here. Uh, and the offset form is just uh, super, super fitment. So the rear 18 by 11, and then the front are 18 by 10. And this is about as big as you can uh, go in the rear without having to do any kind of, of fender rolling. People can fit um, 18 by 11 and a half, but you'll have to roll or cut your fenders, and, and I didn't want to deal with that. And let me just get a get a co uh, close up. So this is the finish. It looks really nice in person. Um, I went through a lot of pictures because if you look on CCW's website, they'll just post pictures of the center caps to give you your finish options, and that's kind of hard to judge what the finish is. So I spent a lot of time googling because they have a they have a gloss clear brush, they have a matte clear brush, they have a silver. I think they had a titanium finish, they had a gunmetal finish, and it's really hard to figure out what the color is um, online when they just show you a center cap. Uh, so I spent a lot of time on Instagram, on Google image search, uh, just finding pictures of wheels on other cars so I could get a better idea of how they're gonna look. And then for the tires, uh, I do not have the front tires yet. I've ordered them. They're, they're delayed. Um, they'll probably be here next week. Uh, but I went with some Michelin, to uh, do Michelin Pilot Super Sport, I believe. Yep. Um, they also have the PS2s, but these are the 
the Super Sport. And these are 295, 35, 18 for the rear. And the front, I did 275, uh, 35, 18. And the reason I went with these uh, is, is because they'll be all right in the rain. I know a lot of people will go with the RA88s uh, or some kind of uh, drag radial, and if you get caught in a little bit of rain, it's, it's dangerous. And the last thing I'd, I'd want to do is, is get in a wreck um, just because it rained a little bit. So these Michelins have really good reviews. Uh, they're a little bit on, on the pricey side, uh, but I figured it was well worth it, and I was really sick of uh, trying to read up on every single tire. And I went with these sizes uh, because I wanted something that's not going to like balloon the sidewall, and I don't want something that is going to be stretched. And I wanted something that's going to have uh, a little bit of lip protection on the wheel. Um, so just like I did for the, the centers of the CCW wheels, I spent a lot of time Google imaging these tires uh, to try to find the similar specs on wheels, to try to find a shot from the rear that would kind of show, or oh, does it protect the wheel, or does it not? Is the sidewall ballooned? Um, I spent a lot of time, and I found some pictures where someone ran these on a BMW, and they, they just look perfect. So I'm hoping that that's, that's what's gonna happen with my car, they're just gonna look perfect. Uh, so let's go over um, to the car. Let me grab this. <laughs> And I'm going to show you what I'm dealing with and what I'm having to modify uh, on the dust shields. So here's the rear. Um, I, I'm just test fitting it. Everything's kind of loosely uh, bolted up. It, it clears fine. Uh, but I did have to do something with the dust shield. So this is the factory dust shield. Um, and you can't really take these off easily unless you unpress the wheel bearing, um, and I know that because I put new wheel bearings in my car two years ago. I had this off, I cleaned it up, I painted it, and, and now I'm hacking it up. Because uh, when you try to put the rotor on, it's, it's just got to hit. It's a larger diameter rotor. There's more metal sticking out of this dust shield, um, and it just hits the entire way around. So I wanted to get a nice clean cut um, around everything. So the first thing I did is I cut off this this lip that's where it kind of rolls over. I just cut on the back side of it. And then I put the rotor on, and the rotor was kind of close to touching. Like I could put it on um, the, the entire way, and then I wanted to have a nice clean gap. So what I did is I took this little piece of wood, I did some measurements, and just cut it the same width, and I put this on the inside of the rotor face, and I kind of just dragged it around, marking where to cut. Um, on this dust shield. Before I, I marked it, obviously I put a piece of painter's tape around it so that the marker would, would stick to something, but I, I ran it all the way around. Then I had a nice, clean, straight line on where I wanted to cut it, um, and I cut that off. And then I was able to take my fingers underneath the lip and kind of bend it up a little bit to, to make it a little bit bigger in diameter. And when the stock rotor um, goes over that, it's got to sit something like this just a little bit away from the face. It looks clean. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and paint this so it doesn't, doesn't rust where this is, but I'm happy with that. And the front, <laughs> the front isn't as clean uh, to do. The front requires kind of some extensive work, and I'll, I'll show you exactly what I did. So this is how it ended up. and I had to make a series of cuts. Uh, the front do require modifications to the actual caliper itself. So here's that, that bracket. It bolts on right here. It's kind of an L shape. It bolts on to the factory location here and right here. And then the caliper bolts to that, and there's a spot right there, obviously, and then down here. But this caliper cross section um, needs to run right over the, the factory ear. And you can see in here, that's where the bolt needs to go. Um, it's, it's not going to play well, so you have to notch out uh, the caliper so that it'll clear that factory ear. Let me see if I can get a shot from the back side as well. So there's the kind of the L I was talking about. 
and then this bolt right here that goes through that notch that I did in the caliper and it goes uh, in, into his bracket. That notch allows it to, to clear. So modifying this, kind of the same thing on the top. Um, I'll show you the other side that I haven't modified yet. I've got to, it, it stuck way out on the top. So I had to, to cut it off just like I did the rear. Now on the side here, um, the metal comes over and it kind of flares out. And at first I tried to, to bend it over to keep it as close to this tie rod end as, as I could. And it just barely cleared. I, I knew I was gonna have rubbing issues and, and I didn't wanna have to take everything off again. So I did end up notching this up above the tie rod end. I was really hoping that I'd be able to get away with not doing it because if I had a piece of metal here, it kind of give it a layer of protection between that, um, between the tie rod end and, and the rotor. And if, if you look, if you actually have the rotor on, I have it off right now, so I'd be able to show, show you this video. This tie rod end itself comes pretty close to the, to the rotor. Um, so there's no way a piece of metal can safely go between there. This bottom area, cut out. This bottom area has to be cut out because the caliper comes down and I'm gonna clean that up a little bit. You can kind of see where it's jagged. And then right here, this comes down quite a bit, um, but it, it's gotta hit the, hit the rotor. Um, so I cut it and I cut it right here. Uh, and if you look at the back of the rotor, turn this upside down. If you look at the back of the rotor, the further out you are, you're, you hit this face, but as you move in, there's a lip. So you could, you could be in here and you could stick out a little bit further and that's fine because this face sticks above right here. So if you're down here, you can actually have stuff stick out a little bit further because it's, it's not gonna rub. So that's exactly what goes on here. If this sticks down too far, it'll hit the outer face of the rotor. So you, I cut it up a little bit shorter. Some people hack it off completely, um, but I figured if I keep it down here a little bit, it's gonna provide kind of some heat protection for this lower um, ball joint. So that's my reasoning for that. Um, and that's also part of my reasoning for wanting to keep this up here. It, it protects this ball joint. Um, it'll keep some water and stuff away from the rotor. And then these vents actually flare out on the backside. So I'm thinking that they catch air and help cool the rotor. Um, so I wanted to leave as many of those as I could. So that's what it looks like modified. Let me go over to the other side. So this is an unmodified uh, stock TT dust shield. I think the non-turbo ones are a little bit different. So right here on the top, this ends up getting cut away. Um, and whatever thickness I used for the back with that piece of wood, I, I just ran it right along here and that, that was the line I made. Um, so the top gets cut away all the way down to here. Then right here, it's gonna get notched over and down. And then this area can bend in a little bit so that it goes um, above that tie rod end and it'll give you the clearance that you need. This part gets completely cut out straight down. This ear right here, that caliper is gonna come down here so this, this gets cut straight down. And then you're left with this part that covers the lower ball joint, but it's sticking too far down. You can see it, you can see how far it sticks down uh, on the side there. So then this will get zipped across so that um, the, the lower part of the front control arm just sticks down a little bit below the, the dust shield. So it's, it's quite extensive to do. Hopefully I can make this side kind of resemble what the other side uh, did. It's retaining as much factory dust shield as, as you possibly can um, without risking anything uh, rubbing on it. So that's it for now. I'll do another video uh, once, once I get the wheels and, and tires mounted. Got this side uh, modified as well. I've got the dust shield cut up, bent everywhere, the same spots uh, that I used on the other side. And now I'm gonna modify the, the actual caliper 
Um, and instead of just putting the caliper up there, rocking it down and kind of marking where this is, um, I used a piece of cardboard and kind of made my own template. So you can see what has to happen to, to fit around that ear. This is the template I made on the other side. So it's just flipping it around. And I'm about to start cutting this up. That's the mark right there. Um, I put masking tape over all of the pistons. I don't want any aluminum uh, dust getting in there. There's already uh, a factory plug on the, the brake line feed and the bleeders. Um, so I'm not gonna get aluminum anywhere. And I found what works best is using one of these with a cutoff wheel and just kind of go back and forth. Don't actually try to cut down at a V or anything, just slowly back and forth. That'll dig out material the fastest. And then after I use an aluminum bit on this air tool, um, the, the teeth have some pretty big gaps in them and this, this helps kind of clean it up, round it out a little bit um, and, and fit well. When I did the dust shields, this is what I used to, to cut them. Um, you could use a cutoff wheel like that, but I don't, I don't think you'd, you'd, you'd get it in the wheel wells very well or you'd have a hard time. So just a three inch disc on, on a cutoff wheel and then to kind of clean up the burrs, um, I, I use the sanding disc and, and the hand file. So I'm gonna get this notched out right now. Okay, so I've got this caliper cleaned up. Uh, this is ground out like it should so that it fits. Um, when I was putting it on, I, I noticed something when I was looking down the back of it and his installation instructions uh, just show his bracket going right against this and bolting on. But if you look here, I've made the black outline right around where his bracket goes. And you can see right here, this is raised up and, and his bracket clears that. Uh, so it's, it's below the slip. But if you look in the center, this part is elevated. There's a little drop down there. And there's also a little drop down focus this a little bit, right here. So this center part is raised higher. Um, he doesn't say anything about grinding that down. I probably wouldn't try to grind it down. You'll never get it uh, perfectly flat unless you had it machined out. Um, so when that bracket is being clamped and, and bolted on and these, these bolts are tightening against these ears, there's actually a little gap between where it's tightening. I can, I can rock this ruler and I can go the other way as well. Um, so there's a there's an air gap in there, and that's probably not good uh, for tightening it down. These are these are giant bolts, so you you have a solid steel bracket, and you're you're tightening it down. And it's wanting to pull here and pull here, and kind of um, just overemphasizing this uh, bevel there. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I've got these really thin stainless uh, washers and I don't even know what size they are. I don't even know why I have them, um, but I've got exactly four of them and that's how many I need. Uh, I think I'm gonna run these here. That way, when you put this ruler on, it doesn't rock and it's ever so slightly, you probably can't even measure it. Um, it, it does leave a tiny little gap here, but I mean, it's less, it's less than less than a millimeter, you can't even see it uh, on the camera. I'm gonna run those, that way when the, when the bolts are going in and they're clamping this and pulling tight and you've got a solid steel bracket against this backside, there's no hollow spot where the bolts are going. I don't wanna put extra stress on, on these ears trying to, to tighten it and close that gap. Um, that way it's solid all the way through. So that's, that's what I'm gonna do. I'll contact Peter. Um, I don't know if he's ran into this or noticed that it may, it may be perfectly fine not to do it. I mean, he's got a lot of people running this kit um, and the instructions he sent me don't say to do this, uh, but I'm gonna do it um, just just because uh, I think it'll, it'll work better. So I'm getting closer to getting everything installed. Here's a video of the dust shields. Um, they've been cut up obviously, but I've, I've gone through and added some uh, primer and uh, caliper paint over all the cut edges. This kind of shows 
the, fi the final form. Um, I more or less brushed it on. I didn't want to get overspray everywhere in the garage. And I did end up trimming that a little bit more. So the top and bottom project the, the ball joints. There's some metal between there that'll keep heat away from them. Um, couldn't do anything about the tie rod end. Uh, Peter said it's fine. And I filed and, and rounded all the, the edges so there's nothing that's sharp that's gonna catch on anything. Then over on the rear. So it looks pretty OEM. If you didn't really know what you're looking at, you probably wouldn't think they've been modified. Um, I did have to snip a little bit here and then down here as well because uh, the ears on the caliper were, were rubbing there. I didn't notice initially. And then over here I just threw the rotor on because I didn't really have a good uh, video of how the dust shield looks behind the rotor. So you can see there's a, a good size space. I probably could have left a little bit more of a lip on there. Um, but it's even all the way across and by bending up the bending up the edges um, it almost gets to where the the height of the rotor would be it's, it's right on right on the edge and then again i snipped the the sides over over here so the caliper ears won't won't hit and this just looks exactly like the other side uh, so now i'm gonna Get the calipers on and double check the wheel fitment. Um, I may have to shave some material off the front calipers um, if they come close to the inner barrel. I got to measure it. Brembo wants around three millimeters of, of spacing. Um, I plan on sliding uh, a deck of cards in there, see how many cards I can fit, and then I'll measure the, the thickness. I have the calipers bolted on now, not for good obviously because you get a Loctite stuff and I still got to lube the back side of the pads and, and put those on, but the calipers are bolted up uh, tight to it, the brackets are bolted tight. I'm just going to show a video of how stuff kind of looks as far as the dust shields and, and caliper alignment. So plenty of room on the top. <laughs> I get down behind it, you can see uh, this lower part of the dust shield that protects the ball joint does stick out some, but because it's in the recessed area of the rotor and not on the actual part that the pad hits, it sticks out a little more, it's fine. That's the tie rod end. It's, it's close. I did turn the wheel back and forth. There's no play in the tie rods. It doesn't really get any closer than it is right now. So everything, everything is good uh, for fitment on the front. And I do have just one pad in. These pins press in from the back. I've just got them lightly in now. I didn't want to press them all the way because they look like they may be tricky to pop back out. Um, but you can see the pad kind of does overhang the, the rotor just, just a tiny amount. And then on the inside, the pad also overhangs the face of the rotor just a tiny amount. It looks like they split the difference. Um, plenty of room up top for the rotor. Kind of, this, kind of the same thing for the bottom spins fine and then if you look at it head on you kind of want to have the same gap on each side and it looks pretty well centered um, so he, he probably spent a lot of time perfecting uh, this um, this is where I think I may have to shave some I'm gonna mount the wheels in a little bit uh, but he there, there's definitely room where if the the brackets if the holes were a little bit more to the right um, the caliper would sit on um, a tiny amount more and then you'd probably have a little bit more wheel clearance but 
uh, as is, it, it looks good. Uh, we'll see how the, the wheel fits on it. And I'm going to go to the back wheel. And I've got these mounted up. There's the dust shield. That ear I trimmed off no longer rubs. Um, I've got one brake pad in on the front just to see where it grabs. This one uh, doesn't extend past the edge. It's actually in a tiny, a tiny bit. And then the inside of the pad is kind of right on the edge where it should be. And you're going to run into to this. It looks like he split the difference um, or sent it arm as best as he could. Because uh, these, these Brembos, remember, they're for a completely different car than these, these rotors are. So this, this uh, width of this rotor and this width of the pad, um, they're, they're really close for being two different cars. And then if we look centered, you can see there's uh, a gap on the right there. Then if we look at the gap on the left, it is a little bit closer here. You could probably try to add another washer to, to space it out a tiny uh, bit further. Uh, but I don't know when I put this wheel on and, and bolt it down if that's going to put some pressure on this rotor and, and it, it may pull it in some. Um, as is, it'll work fine right now. Uh, and I bet you'd have a hard time getting a washer that was thin enough not to make it uh, end up being more of a gap on the, the front side of the rotor versus the bad. It'd be hard, it'd be hard to get a spacer to split that difference. Um, so this looks like it's going to work. Uh, he did a good job with the brackets. Um, so now I'm going to get those wheels uh, on there now to do my final test fit. So now I have the wheels on and I'm just going to kind of go over fitment, do a video from the front and back side. Um, the wheels look great. You can see the this is the rear caliper through it. Um, looks looks perfect. Uh, it spins. You may hear a little bit of, of rubbing. That's just because the front brake pad is still on the caliper. Um, there's no clamp thing on it holding it back. Uh, I think you may have problems if you're still on stock struts. I think the lower perch is a little bit uh, wider. So these are these are Megan coilovers. Um, so there's plenty plenty of room than when you have the tire on it. But if if you are on stock springs, I've I've never seen stock super springs, but I know stock 3000 GT springs, the lower perch is a lot wider, and I'd imagine you may have um, some clearance issues there. So these are just just massive wheels. 18 by uh, 11 in the back and then this is what it looks like from the back side all kinds of room you don't have to worry about room uh, with the rear calipers the wheel seems to clear everything looking up at the, the side of the car. So these, these are 11s, and I shouldn't have to roll my fender, so if I do, maybe just, just a little. Uh, you can see the kind of profile straight on. I don't know what my camber is either. I haven't had it aligned since I put the 8.8 .8, uh, diff in. Uh, but that's the, the rear wheel that fits well. So let's go on to the front wheel. And that caliper is just massive, um, but the, the bolts around the, the wheel where the face bolts on, um, the, the inner part of the, the barrel is, is back here, but we have this face, so it kind of does hide um, the outermost portion of the caliper. So if you look at it like this, um, it looks ginormous. You look at it like this, you're kind of hiding part of that, that caliper, but it looks really good with the, with the red and that brush gloss clear. So fitment wise, um, 
all kinds of room between the the coilover and the wheel. I bet stock struts would even would even have plenty of room. The spring isn't loaded right now, so I think when it has the tire on and it presses up, it's got to go up, and I'm hoping it tucks into that fender. And again, I need an alignment. This is a 10-inch wheel. You can see the, the nuts on the back side um, where these ARP studs are. There's, there's plenty of room for the caliper. I mean, it's close, but th there's plenty of room where I wouldn't worry about it. And I'm going to get on the back side now. This is the part that I'm the most worried about. I wish I had my car on the lift, but my 3000 GT is the part with a motor out sitting on it. So I'm doing this on jack stands. Um, so all kinds of room in the center. But as we come down, it gets really close there. Um, I, I don't know what, what that gap is. I know Brembo wants three millimeter clearance. Um, and these calipers are very meaty. So if you do have to grind uh, some of them to make room. There's there's plenty of material on them and because these are faced wheels and uh, How the face kind of hides the the outer part of the front barrel I think anything that you you grind here. You're not gonna see on these wheels when installed and Let's look up at the top Should be kind of symmetrical so it should be the same. Yeah, there's a I don't have my flash on but there's a tiny gap there as well. I mean, it doesn't, nothing hits when rotating it. It may work. You'd have to be very careful with your wheel weight placement. Um, but I'm gonna get some cards and see what the thickness is. And I have a feeling I may be shaving uh, a little bit off the calipers just, just for peace of mind. I don't wanna have to bleed the brakes later on if I do somehow get into rubbing issues and stuff expands and contracts. Uh, and the, the Brembo, color I guess is like Fiat 199A um, is, is a color code and you can find touch-up paint online from like other sources but it's not it's not high heat paint and I don't think it'll it'll stand up and I contacted Brembo and they said they do plan to eventually release a touch-up paint um, but but no no ETA on it um, so I'll probably just use some dupli color caliper paint um, definitely for that half moon shape I cut out here uh, and if I grind some off there, I'll, I'll use it there as well. It's not going to be noticeable again. Um, so everything, <laughs> everything is very close. Uh, but that's kind of the price, price you pay to have big brakes and good looking CCW wheels on, on a Supra. So I didn't have the clearance uh, that I was hoping for. I had some clearance, probably. Um, five, five cards worth, which is, I think, 1.5 millimeter. I'll measure in a minute. Uh, but here's, here's the caliper. And I kind of marked um, when I was under the car where the, where the part was that was the closest to touching. And then this is where I wanted to kind of spread it out to. Um, and I took just a flap wheel. It took quite a while. I probably got over 20 minutes into each side. Um, and I focused on just grinding down kind of the, the center first. And you could actually see where it would kind of look like an M where the center was the low spot. Um, I ground that down and then I evened out the sides to get it kind of a nice contour. Um, I am going to go over it again with some sandpaper to try to s smooth out some of the sanding marks this, this left before I paint it. Um, and the exact same thing on the other side. And it doesn't look that, that bad. I think once it's painted, you're not even gonna know. And you're not gonna see these areas when it's on the car because they'll be up against the wheel. Um, so this is the end result. If I take my caliper, zero it. Uh, crap. <laughs> right here for five cards. And if I take these five cards, stack them up, this is how many I could fit in initially. So 1.47 millimeters. Um, that was between the wheel and 
and uh, the caliper. And then all these that I just dropped on the ground, there's actually 12 cards, so you could probably do the math based on how many per card, or just watch. And 3.61 millimeters. Um, so that's well over the three millimeter recommended recommendation uh, by Brembo. I may even get a little bit more clearance when I sand that um, to clean up the, the sanding marks, uh, but that, that should work fine. Um, I'm gonna have to do the other side uh, easily an hour, uh, probably a little more than an hour into to grinding that down and you get dust everywhere. Um, but that's it for now. So I got both sides uh, all done with a flap wheel. Um, and then after going over it with a flap wheel and test fitting it to make sure that it worked, um, I used a, a Scotch-Brite pad wheel and that really smoothed it out. I got rid of all the sanding marks that the flap wheel uh, caught. So I'm gonna run into town and try to get some high heat uh, red spray paint and I'm gonna mask this off carefully so the only thing that um, I'm gonna end up painting is the parts that I've, that I've exposed. You're not gonna see this with the wheel on. Um, so the, the finish will be the, the OAM Brembo finish. This is what you'll see. This will be red uh, and you won't even be able to know what I did unless you take my wheel off or watch this video. So I went to the auto store and I got this Dupli color caliper red um, paint. I've bought this before. Um, it's really the only caliper paint that they have that are advanced auto parts. And I went and I basically taped the areas off, um, masked everything, and I brought it outside and I gave it a few light coats. And you can, you can definitely see it's a different shade of red, um, but it does, it does seem to blend in um, all right. When I, when I peeled the masking tape, it did kind of give some lines. Uh, so I went around the edges with a little brush while the paint was still kind of uh, tacky, I guess. And I, I think it blends in well. The wheel's going to be right against this. Like, you're never going to see this or this when it's installed. Um, this is the only real visible part. So it should work all right. It'll protect that. Um, and someday if, if Brembo does their touch-up paint, um, I may buy that and go over this area again so it's an exact match. Or maybe someday down the line, uh, I could send them out to be powder coated. The, the finish that they give is just is normal paint. This isn't a powder coat or anything like that. Um, so if you sent them out and had them powder coated, they'd, they'd look nice. And I had one little blemish there. That's, that's not for me. That came that way when it was shipped. Um, they just get thrown in some cardboard boxes and stacked on top of each other and there's not really any padding and what will happen is uh, that little nub will poke through the box and it can rub on stuff uh, below it. You can see this one's a little bit beat up just because it was poked through the box. Um, I should probably put a little touch up paint on that while I have it out. So that's, that's that. Uh, I'll get them installed tomorrow and hopefully uh, bled with any luck. My, my front tires will be here tomorrow as well. Um, maybe I can get those on this weekend. If not, it'll have to be Monday. So I've got all the brackets on permanently. Uh, I put some blue Loctite on all the bolts that held the brackets on, um, the bolts that hold the calipers. I just used them as is with the, with the lock nuts. I didn't use any Loctite on there. I've never seen anyone put Loctite on caliper bolts, but I figured the brackets are kind of permanent and want to be part of the car now, so I did add some Loctite there, even though they have locking nuts. I've been installing the brake lines, and that's easier said than, than done. Um, I don't know. I, I assume my car is all stock as far as the lines, uh, but I've been having a hell of a time with these, these flare fittings. I don't know if you can see that. So I, I think those are stock flare fittings and they're a lot different than the ones I've dealt with. You can see how they've got this flat section on the bottom and that is kind of bloomed out a little bit. This is probably the best looking one. 
um, but some of the other fittings had been tightened so tight that they ballooned out enough where I had a hell of a time removing them. Like all the threads in the stock brake line came right out of it and I probably spent 20 minutes trying to get uh, this, this brake line off because of it. And I've never seen anything like that before. Um, I was gonna reflare the ends and use some different uh, fittings from a 3000 GT, but the, the Supra fittings, even though they're an inverted flare just like a 3000 GT is, um, the Supra fittings are, are deeper and the 3000 GT flare nuts that I have would bottom out um, before, before they do anything. Uh, so I had, I tried something, I hope it's gonna work, uh, to get everything back in, I kind of had to grab that flat part and I used these wire strippers with like the yellow crimp section and I just went around it slightly closing that up um, so it didn't bubble out as much and I was able to actually fit it in the brake lines because um, before that you wouldn't have been able to shove it uh, in here. It'd, it would hit on the top threads, it wouldn't go in. Um, so I didn't plan on dealing with that. That was a royal pain. Uh, hopefully it's not gonna leak. I'll find out soon enough though. Um, so as far as, as routing, you have to be pretty careful when you put the brake lines on. Um, I haven't bled them yet, obviously, because that one's not on, but you, you wanna make sure that it's not gonna hit the wheel. Um, and when you've got the wheel on here, they go pretty pretty deep. Remember I said if you have stock struts, it may want to hit it. Uh, so right here, this is all I did for the rear line. So it just goes down and up. Pretty simple, same orientation as stock. Uh, I did have to... Down here. I did have to put a little bit of a notch there so it can go straight down. Without it, the line would want to kink over this way. Um, and it would actually uh, hit the wheel, and if I had it kink the other way, it would hit the strut. So I cut a little groove um, in the caliper so it would go straight down. It stays away from everything. On the other side, it was a lot, it was a lot closer, and I probably didn't need to cut that little groove. I think it would have worked just because when you tighten it, the line kind of wants to twist one way, and it wants to stay away from the wheel. Um, but I cut a groove in it anyways, just so that it'd be symmetrical. Um, and I've got this one on because I wanted to wanted to double check fitment on everything before I bleed anything. Uh, so same thing, comes straight out the bottom. And I've got probably three inches of clearance there. So noth nothing to worry about here. The struts are fully unloaded. When it compresses, uh, I should have plenty of line um, to go upwards. So the rear are pretty good. Uh, the front are kind of um, more of a pain because just because they turn, they're a little bit longer um, and you don't want to risk anything getting kinked when you turn one way or another. I'll, I'll start over here. I don't have this line on, um, but the factory line uses this bracket right here and they've got a special collar and then there's a bolt that goes up um, from underneath and these aftermarket lines are labeled and they've got this kind of flange on it which isn't oriented the same way so these are meant to actually remove that bracket um, put this line on and then that flange will go in using one of the bolts that held that bracket on. Um, I use the, the lower one, the inside one. And then the line will come over and it'll go straight down um, onto the caliper. And then up here, uh, the clip system, the, the ends of the aftermarket line uh, are completely different than, than stock. So this is the aftermarket one. And th this is the stock one. So they don't really look anything alike. This has this collar as a stopping plate and then it's got a clip on the other side and you can't take that off. It won't fit on this line. Um, you can't use it. Uh, so what I did, 
um, is I took a, a stainless washer, and these are the same kind of washers as I use the spacers in here. Remember, I, I showed that earlier. And I did reach out to Peter on that. He said using a washer is fine. Um, he's said no one's ever really noticed that or complained about it. Um, so it's probably fine as is, but he said there's definitely no harm in using a washer. Uh, so the exact same washer, I must have bought like a six or eight pack of them um, at one point, but you can put that over. I had to hollow out the inside of it just a little because it wasn't the right diameter. You can put that over, then that'll go in there and that'll, that'll sit flush against this flange. And then on the other side, you can actually take the factory clip and you can slide that over. Um, but it's a little uh, too narrow, so I did have to widen it. I had to uh, lightly file out um, the inside just to make it a little bit bigger in diameter. And that'll shove on there. And that's what I've already got installed on the other side. Um, I just need to snug up everything. It's kind of loosely fit right now. But that's what it'll look like. You've got the clip. And when you tighten these, there's nothing that's got to keep this from spinning. Um, so you got to put a wrench here and then uh, a 10 millimeter wrench there, preferably a, a flare wrench. So let's get under here and I'll show you how the line kind of looks. So right now we're, we're in neutral, we're just, we're just pointed straight. So the upper part you don't really have to worry about. The bottom where it comes in, um, I did have it going perfectly straight up, but that put a lot of tension um, when I was fully turned left. So I decided to angle it um, towards uh, the opposite side of the car. So all the way to the left here. On the other one, it'll be all the way to the right. So when I turn this, I got the... so that's full lock um, one way, it doesn't hit anything. And then you see right here, it's oriented um, and it's not super tight and that's perfectly fine. Before when it was pointed straight up, it, it had a lot of stress on there. And if I go back, I probably should have been on the other side. Um, <laughs> but the line's, the line's not hitting anything and it's, it's perfectly fine. So here I am. That's what my gap looks like now. Uh, and there is a little uh, bit of wiggle room. You can kind of move the caliper up just a tiny bit or to the left or to the right. Um, I've got it pushed all the way in, but I've, I've got, I've, I think that's after I've had everything off and on. I think it's like nine cards I can fit on the bottom and 10 on the top. Um, but that's, that's a lot more clearance. And I'm doing this video and you probably didn't even notice that part of the calipers are, are painted because you can't really see it, which is good. And those are gonna look really good going down the road. So the next thing, uh, I've still gotta swap in my master cylinder. This is, this is the factory master cylinder, but I did swap the reservoir over uh, last year or two years ago when I did the traction control delete. So I've got to swap the whole thing now. That shouldn't be a big deal. I've got to get this brake line on this side and then I'm going to bleed the brakes. And probably the next little clip that I do, uh, I'll have the tires on and mounted. Uh, my front tires didn't show up uh, today. They're, they're in Williston, which is like half an hour from here. And I'm not going to be able to get them uh, until Tuesday uh, because Monday is a, a holiday. So Tuesday, I hope to, to have the car on the ground. So I lied. One more video uh, before the tires and stuff are on. Um, I was testing uh, this side and I noticed something that I didn't spot uh, on the other side. And that's when this thing is turned all the way like this. Uh, this, this line was wanting to rub on the subframe. And if we look at the subframe, I've, I've gone ahead and I've rounded this corner because it was razor sharp, kind of like, uh, kind of like this edge right, right here. These, 
these casting line cuts um, are, are almost like a, a razor blade and you wouldn't want this line to be rubbing on that every time you took a full left turn. So I did two things. Um, I took a file and I, I rounded this corner so it's, it's not sharp at all. Um, and I put five little stainless washers in back of this bracket to kind of push it out a little bit. And if you look at the stock, the stock bracket that bolted there, it kind of held that line a little ways away from it. And that's probably why, because when you go full left turn, this brake line wants to bundle up behind there and, and they didn't want it hitting this uh, subframe. So either fix would have probably been fine, but I, I spaced it and I got rid of that casting. Um, so that, that should be good. So here are my rear tires. Uh, I got them mounted and I balanced them. Um, I've got them on the wheels and they just look perfect. All that research kind of paid off. It's got some nice uh, sidewall protection where it, it's not going to expose the slip. Um, there's no extreme ballooning. There's no extreme stretching. Uh, it, it just looks perfect. Uh, exactly what I was going for. Um, so yeah, these, these look great. Here's the inside, kind of the same way. So I had the rear mounted the other day just because the rear came first. I already had the tires. And my front tires just showed up today. So I'm mounting those. I've got one mounted just to kind of show what the profile looks like. This is the 275-35. Um, so not really a lot of stretch or anything. Uh, it does have uh, protection against the, the rim, and what I mean is the, the lip is, is sunken in to the tire. It's got nice protection. Hopefully it's not going to rub anywhere. I still got to balance it. I have to be very careful um, where I put my wheel weights. Um, I don't want them to, to hit anything. The only thing that kind of bugs me a little bit is the rim sticks out on the inside. Uh, and the, the lip on the rim is, is identical, kind of the, the top to bottom. Um, it's not the rim's design, it's the tire design. And the rear tires didn't have this issue. But look at, this is the inside of the, the Michelin. So it's not really a deep pocket um, for that to sit. Let me put the, the phone in the tire. Then if we go over to the front, you can see how it's got that deep pocket. So the, the front is going to protect the wheel. The back isn't. Not, not the end of the world. Um, if that's the only thing that bugs me uh, with this install, I can probably live with that. Uh, so next video will be of them on the car. Uh, I've been using some uh, lug nuts I had in my kind of bolt bin um, just, just to put them on. They're supposed to come with lug nuts. Uh, they forgot to ship them. Um, Peter has a, a brand new set at his house he's sending me, so hopefully I'll get them uh, tomorrow or the next day. Uh, and I'll do one last video, um, kind of a walk around of the car and, and drive it some and, and give my opinion on, on how I like them. So the wheels are finally on the car. Um, a little bit of a mishap with the lug nuts for some reason. Uh, Peter thought he was sending me a full set. He only sent me 10. Um, but I did have uh, 10 here, exactly 10 to work with. Um, they're not the exact same style, um, but I threw them on for now. I'm just gonna get a full set of, of lug nuts so they all match. Um, but the wheels look great. Uh, they, they came out absolutely uh, perfect. And I, I drove the car, uh, it seemed to handle well. Um, I did get a little bit of rubbing if I hit a bump in the front. Um, I'm still not sure what it's hitting. I've jacked up the other end of the car. I've bounced up and down on the strut tower. Uh, I don't see anywhere that it hits. Probably the closest spot would be right, would be right here. And I've never had these uh, aligned since I bought the car. I've never had an alignment. I've had everything apart. I kind of marked where it was and then put it back. Um, but I'm gonna get it aligned. And there's a range when you get stuff aligned to, to have it in spec. Um, I'm gonna kind of make it so that I'm in range, but I'm on the outside of the range uh, to wherever I'll have the most clearance from wanting to rub on any of the fenders.
Here's the rear. Um, my overall impression of the brakes, uh, they, they seem to work really well. I did the break-in procedure, um, like going up to 50, 60 miles an hour and then slowing down to 10 to 20, um, doing that several times. Uh, it does seem to bite a little harder than uh, factory. How much better are they than factory? I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't say it's got to stop um, X amount of feet uh, earlier. I know the factory brakes are pretty good on Supras, um, and people will say there's there's no need for a big brake kit upgrade. Just get stainless lines, new rotors, new pads. Uh, but I, I think this this kit is definitely superior. I just couldn't tell you how much better it is. And, and people would say the same thing with the 3000 GTs, just two brakes, lines, um, some slotted rotors, uh, and, and you'll be good. And I brought my 3000 GT to Naperville. It's in Canada, it's a drag strip. Um, and a long time ago, uh, the off-ramp for the drag strip was kind of cut short. If you, if you couldn't pull off the off-ramp, you'd actually end up in a cornfield. And I could always, I could always pull off on on the on-ramp, but after I did the turbo upgrades and stuff, uh, it, it was a little bit cumbersome to do so. It, it would struggle if I hot-lapped it a few times. Um, they've actually extended the track now. There's, there's two off-ramps, so you can still get off where, uh, where it originally did, or you can go off a little bit further now. And uh, I have no problem with my big brake kit upgrade on my 3000 GT VR4. Um, hot lapping and getting off the, the first off ramp every time. Um, so that's, that's my opinion on big brake kits. Uh, they're, they're definitely um, worth it depending on how you drive the car. Uh, they're definitely worth it if you're just doing it for looks alone. Um, these calipers just look meaty. Uh, just to show kind of a side profile, uh, the front tire is turned a little bit, um, but they do they do stick out a, a tiny amount in the front, um, but if I jack up the rear, it, it does want to tuck under there. Um, and if I do turn the tire kind of full lock, if I turn it all the way to the right, um, this front portion right here, it doesn't rub this fender liner, but it's probably as close as you can get um, without touching it. So if your fender liners are, are wavy or old or I don't know if you're driving fast and somehow turning full lock, if the, the wind coming in the front bumper, um, it's, it's probably possible for it to rub there. And the other side's um, even, even closer than, than this side for some reason. And these are all brand new fender liners. Uh, but yeah, so it's not, it's not rubbing. I'm not gonna worry about it as far as the turning. I'm gonna try to figure out what it does run when I when I hit a bump after the alignment and stuff and I get my ride height kind of adjusted I'll worry about it a little more uh, so there's kind of the rear profile and you can see the rears tucked in um, some the, the factory wheels tuck in quite a bit actually they they're way way sunken in um, the, the 315, the 11 and the halves come all the way out to pretty much the edge of this metal, but this, this 11 inch with a 295, 35, 18, it's straight up is right where the inside of this quarter panel is. Um, it's not rubbing here. If you had maybe wider tires or were a little lower, it probably would, um, and you wouldn't need much of a roll uh, to fix that. But very, very happy uh, with the outcome. I think they look great. They really changed the, the look of the car. And pretty much all that's, that's left for me to do to my Supra um, is I'm gonna have the rear bumper repainted. It's, it's, uh, it's the original paint, but the bumpers on these cars will fade differently you can kind of see it's like a more off-white to white. So I'm gonna have the rear bumper painted to match and I've got a TRD spoiler for it for the carbon center um, from Withbiz. And that's overseas. I'm gonna have 
uh, the sides painted, and I'll keep the center carbon. Let me know if you have any questions.